Hello and welcome again for our IBC MENA webinar, our November webinar. And it is my honor um, to welcome Via. Uh, my name is Jasna Sukhadulz. Uh, I am a member of the IABC IMINA board, and so is Via. Via uh, Valentukonite, I hope I said this. No, That's very correct. correctly. <laughs> um, so, Via is, um, among other things, she's from L Lithuania and she had uh, the communications at uh, Telia Lietua. Uh, but she's also an IBC winner. Um, she won two gold quills last year, and um, she, uh, this is just one of the awards that uh, she won. And today we have Fia with us to tell us how to get the gold quills. You know that uh, uh, you still have two months uh, until the deadline. Uh, the early bird deadline is already gone. It was uh, on 15th of November, uh, but you still have time for the uh, gen uh, until end of January um, to submit your gold quills um, for for the gold quilt awards. So, uh, Via, hi. Um, hi, Asna. As and Via told me. Um, yeah, um, as Via told me, she will be accepting the questions also as we go along and um, you can write them in the questions box and uh, I will interrupt you Via and read them out loud uh, if something comes up uh, in between or um, in the end, uh, at the end of the webinar. So uh, Via, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jasna. So, hello everyone. Um, thank you very much, Jasna, for the great introduction. And I'm really glad to be in the board together with you of IABC Mina. It's a big honor. And it's a big honor for me to say hello to you, dear attendees of this webinar, either real time or later when you will receive a recording. Um, I think for me, this topic is very recent, and that's why I think it's it's uh, one of the things that I brought after after the coming back from the um, from the world conference of IABC with the two gold girls that definitely I want more um, first of all from my country more applications and more winnings and as well I want to see more uh, applications from Imina because we have a great region and uh, and obviously there is some good work being done over there and probably we don't always know about it so let me start uh, with with a with you know with a very very start today uh, during today's webinar i'm hoping to cover the following topics um, I know that uh, this webinar has been promoted all across the board and some of you may not be familiar with IABC and, um, and some of you may not be f familiar with Gold Kill Awards, so I'm going to tell a little bit more about this. Then we're going to speak about already the application process and, uh, and the things that are needed to win the Gold Kill. So uh, um, how to select the project, how to allocate the time and what is the best way to organize the entry information to make sure that the jury understands what you want to say. And the must-haves of the successful entry, something that was critical for me when I was filling the applications for my team and also the personal stories and learnings from the application process because I really would like to um, help you to avoid the mistakes that I've done or the amount of time that I've spent during during the application process and save you that time. Uh, you can see a little picture on the slide and this is me very happy collecting the two awards for my team. We were a nine people team and uh, the two awards that we got was for the uh, strategic communication um, section which was about the big merger that we did of the company that I work for now which is Telia Lietova. It used to be two different companies. It used to be an um, uh, internet provider and it, mer uh, and it merged with a mobile provider. And uh, the whole merger process, the change management, we thought that it's been done really well. And uh, I'm really glad that, uh, that, that actually according to the international benchmark, it's also been really um, evaluated as a good project. Also, um, the other award that we got was for one particular skill section. So we also got an award 
in the skills category, which was for a particular initiative that we did within the change program, which is, um, which is about the internal brand launch. So this already represents the two types of different gold kill awards in different categories that you can apply to. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this in the further slides to understand better the process and so on. For those people who don't know what IABC is and what is IMINA, so that's a little one slider about that, that it's a worldwide network of business communicators, great professionals around the world. Uh, it has thousands and thousands of members. Most of them are in uh, the US and Canada. Uh, however, our EMEA region is a little bit cozier, but it's not less, um, not not worse in any way. We have more than 300 members in Europe, Middle East, and North Africa. Very diverse bunch and uh, really amazing people. And my personal motivation for IABC is the professionals of their kind and um, the ability to network and actually network for different knowledge, for different experiences, to something that can save you time, that can give you support, that you can benchmark your own work against the international uh, activities, which is, well, one of the opportunities is what um, the awards program gives. But there's also lots of conferences. We have just booked the EMINA conference dates, which are going to be in April 9th and 10th. So there's a lot of activity going on, which you can find out uh, on our websites, which is a global page, iabc.com, and also the regional page, the iabcemina.com. If you are interested, feel free to approach myself or Yasna or anyone else you see in the contacts list in the board. We are happy to help you to, to give more information about, about this. Moving on to the topic, uh, Gold Kill Awards. It is the biggest program that I've ever seen. And uh, trust me, I've been looking into all the different uh, award programs that are existing in Europe and in the world. And so far, it's been the biggest and the most demanding, I guess, um, award program. But it is also, when it's the most demanding, it's also the most rewarding. Because when you go to Washington, D.C., to a global conference, and you walk down the aisle, and you and you get these awards, it's 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 really amazing feeling. And then it repeats itself when you go back to your home country, to your office, and you present the award to your team and share the experience that you have uh, that you had in the conference so i think it's really really worthwhile more than that it's um it's really once you start once you have a good project it kicks starts um, the good vibe of other projects and other awards that you can could be could be could be getting for this. So in a way, when I won the award for for Goal Kill, we not only got the exposure in Lithuania that we were the first company in Lithuania to get this award, but we also already stood in the line for very good evaluations for the other award programs that we were entering. So this is definitely a benefit to, to apply for this. If you want to know practical details, the nearest deadline is 10th of January and then there is a late deadline on 30th of January. Um, there are 28 different categories for strategic campaigns and for tactical tools. So as, as I mentioned, we did the both. Um, and it can be from internal to external communication to integrated campaigns to marketing to it can be also business and non-profit categories so it really is um, a wide program where anyone who works in communications of all different kinds can really find something for themselves and how to recognize their work and how to recognize their team's work uh, there is also a student entry, at least it was last year, so that has more favorable fees, which is also a nice thing, so that's something to have in mind. Um, as for the deadlines, um, if you are an uh, IABC member, uh, your fees are relatively smaller than the, the ones if you are not a member, and the, and the same goes for the conferences. So if you apply for the award and you also go to the conference to receive the award, it's much better to be an IABC member than not to be. And the fees change with the deadlines as well. 
Um, there is no limit for number of the wards. So there are awards where you have uh, uh, places one, two, and three, and that's it, like gold, silver, and bronze. This is not the case. So basically, all of the uh, all of the applications that fit the benchmark. Uh, they can receive an award of merit or award of excellence. So award of excellence is really getting the highest scores. It has a seven point scoring scale. So four is average, seven is excellent and one is poor. And six and sevens are really kept for the ones which are innovative approach, strategic approach, and I will speak more about this um, in detail, what it meant in my application. Um, so work, there are two parts of the application, work sample and work plan. So they also, see, so they both count, they both have the share in the, in the com common scores. And um, what I'm not going to speak in this webinar is something that is already there as a resource for you. So if you go to the Gold Kill Awards in the, in the slide, you can see the link. You can really find a lot of resources. There is a live, um, there is an online webinar about um, more the technique and the steps and going more in depth into categories and about how the jury evaluates and many, many other things, which are very, very useful. Uh, my goal of this webinar is to take another step further and share some examples about what worked for me and what didn't and what was, um, what was my experience of filling in this in. Because um, uh, what I think would be useful in this is that we often get the resources about how you should do this and this and that, but there's sometimes very easy to see some, some example and then you will definitely know what, um, what could work for you and what not. And I hope to also draw your attention to some practical details which are not in the resources, but um, I saw that it would be, well, for some of the things looked like a no-brainer for me, I just decided to do it and I did it. Some of the things we, from some discussions and, the, and, and when we had some people looking into the applications and thinking, okay, yes, we can tweak this. So what we have learned from this and what kind of feedback from the judge, judges was there. Um, and that's actually another reason why it's so good to apply for these particular awards is that for all your work that you do, you get professional feedback and you, are, and you know that you're evaluated against international benchmarks. So, the feedback that you get from there is not from your boss, it's not from, you know, anyone who was near you or knows you, but who very objectively assesses your work as a communicator, which I think is really great for professional development. So, moving on. Um, after a little intro about what and how do Gold Kill Awards work, um, my next next idea is to speak a bit a little bit about how to select that project which is worth of gold kill um, it is not easy to assess your own work because a lot of things that you do you have a certain evaluation already so for example I thought that I did a, a lot of projects at the same time, I thought that from all of the 15 projects that I did, or my team has done, um, it's, it's, um, it's really, um, you know, all of them are very simple, all of them are very, you know, everyone is supposed to do them, you know, it, it sounded like a hygiene, like there's nothing special I have to tell. Uh, and actually it is not true because uh, we most often see the critical parts of it. We see we are more critical to ourselves, to what we do. So we say, oh, we could have done this thing a little bit better and we could have done this a little bit better. Or we say, oh no, there are another five companies across the country who are doing the same thing or, in the, or it definitely we didn't create anything new in the world. Well, the good thing about this is that um, goal kills are not always about this and we have to lower 
a little bit our self-critic inside and see what the objective measurables are actually. Because this is what Gold Kill Awards are about. They are about how communications help to deliver business results. So if you in your project you can show how the connection between your work and how you helped business to achieve their goals, whether it would be sales increase of a certain project, product, I'm sorry, whether it will be a change program, you know, like in my case it was a merger, whether it was a particular campaign or a particular event that you did. So, so if it is tightly connected to the business goals, if it is a clear purpose as in not to make a great event, but to boost sales in XYZ, or to boost uh, employee engagement from 80% to 85%. So that is something that, is, that is, has already a potential for the, for the award project. Of course, uh, if you succeed it, then, then, then it, is, it, is a good, um, it is a good case. So it brings me to a second point, that second criteria for a good project. So it has to have a clear objectives and measurable results. Um, with communication, there are different types on how you can put objectives. And I will speak a, little, a, bit, a, a bit about this a little bit more. Um, most important things is to make sure that the objectives that you set in the beginning of the projects are being measured. So, and measures cannot only be, so to say, there is a, there are different types of, of um, objectives that you can bring in, different types of measures. There are three types. So one of them is um, outputs, another one is outtakes, and the third one is outcomes. And uh, this is something that you will hear also in other IABC resources and you will see that output is the weakest one. It's more talking about the number of clicks that you've got, about the number of views, and about the attendance numbers. So it's more the communications technical details about how do you know it's, 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 it's like hygienic things that have to happen. Then outtakes is something that you want to move. So what kind of what kind of um, emotion you want to create? What kind of things people should tell about this campaign? What kind of um, let's say reactions you are waiting from the media from this? And then when you speak about outcomes, it comes to a very numbered uh, approach and uh, measures in numbers. So that would be, you know, how much of the sales increase have we noticed throughout the program? Or what was, you know, considered, um, you know, employee engagement increase from, after the program execution. So that's something that, that is, you know, three different things. And the third one, the outcomes, I think is the one that you should be focusing the most of and always have the business outcomes in mind. I will speak about the particular uh, example when I, when I will go into further into the webinar. Um, the third criteria is, of course, it has to be a success story. So, for example, if you have set the goals for the certain campaigns and you haven't reached the business goals, then it is quite kind of hard to actually support this that it was a good that it was a good approach that you took. So, this is something that that you have to keep in mind if you think it was a success, and here you have to actually distinguish where it was we have done everything really right we achieved the goals but we could have done some of the tactics a little bit more perfect that doesn't matter if you achieved your goals it's fine but um, but if everything if you did execution from detail to detail very well but you didn't achieve your goals then it's it's a different story well, one suggestion for me, if you are not sure what kind of projects you would like to apply with, or you have too many projects to apply with, go to the Gold Kill website and have a look at the categories and their descriptions. They are very clearly described and you can really see what comes to your mind, what, what kind of projects from your work come to your mind that are worth recognizing. If you have selected your pro project, it's an application time and uh, I will speak about this in the nearest few moments. 
Uh, and the first question is how much time to allocate for the application because um, uh, my experience with this is that uh, there are different types of awards and different types of applications. Some of them has, have just a little online form where you have to fill in and, uh, and, and it's done. For this application, as you could see from my previous slides, you probably would need more data and you probably would need more detailed descriptions and more samples of your work. So allocate at least twice than you have allocated now for the time. Um, keep in mind that it also has to go align with your, with your own work, so you have to actually allocate some time for filling in the application. Uh, one day or one week before the deadline approaches is really tight thing. One day, is, I would say, is not possible. One week before is possible if your whole team is involved in this and if you have, you know, your whole days for this. So then maybe it's possible. But, uh, but, uh, but it really takes time and it takes time in the places where you don't even expect where it should take time. Uh, one thing that you can already start doing is already starting gathering the data presentations and everything in one place because it's really useful. Um, and, some, and, and once you do the first step, then you will see the next step on what kind of data you need again. Um, an example for me was we were looking into the employee engagement survey results. But what I realized that I didn't have any employee data, so I didn't have any employee demographics about this. So what I had to do is I had to ask HR to generate from the system me the list about how many people we have, what is their age distribution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, and I and it it does take time, you know. It's it's not always that they can bring it to you in a moment. So 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 it does take time also organizing the information. What is also good is to fill the application collectively in the team, so distribute the work early, so then the workload overall is smaller and, uh, and every team member would do their bit, so they would have also, it's also a way for them to review what they have done, so it's helpful at the end of a year with the yearly reviews. And um, and uh, also have one person, would it be yourself or would it be someone else who is who could be a grammar freak and also a very detailed, um, a, a very a person who is who has attention to detail, who could review the consistency of the whole thing. Um, Another thing which is a bit tricky is that you have to make sure that you cover all the bits that are important, but you don't overload your application. So, for example, if you are giving a media monitoring, you don't have to quote every single, um, every single, uh, how do you call it, media appearance. You don't have to call it out, but maybe you want to summarize or you want to give a sample of this, but just one or two or three, but not, you know, 15 of them. Make sure that, uh, just understand that as, lo as much as you put in information, mm, as much time the jury will spend looking at it. And sometimes it's not necessarily, if, you, if you're considered of jury's time as well, then it, it, it helps as well to think about how to put it as, as efficient as, as it's possible. Another thing is technical details on the application system is, um, what I've discovered uh, is that in the system of gold kills, it, is not, um, it does not list all the countries in the world automatically. So I think if you are applying from the EMENA region, you could face the situation that your country is not listed in the selection because this was the case for Lithuania last year. And, um, and, and, and uh, what was very interesting here is that it wasn't, you know, in the beginning you may think that, oh, so Lithuania cannot apply because it doesn't have an IABC chapter. But luckily I actually had some people to ask. And the only thing that I had to do is to write an admin, could you just make sure that my country is included because I want to apply. So it wasn't any rule or anything, it's just, um, it's just there is, you know, not all of the countries are listed there. And all you have to do is ask, but then again, it takes some time to, to, to make those changes so you can actually apply. 
and also payment details. Um, we were doing our payment on the last day and we realized that our credit card is not being accepted in the payment system. Um, not sure the reasons, maybe the wrong bank, maybe something else. Uh, so we had the invoice payment, but also it was a little bit of a risky thing to do it on the last day. So, so something that to look into advance, it's very simple things, organizational, but just have a look into them in advance to make sure that they are organized by the time you're ready to fill in the application. Lastly, um, the hard work definitely pays off because the amount of excitement that you get when you receive an award, um, it's, it's really, really high. And even if you don't receive the highest, highest evaluation, the feedback that you get because they feedback all of the applications, is really, really valuable. So definitely really, really good thing. And I'll tell you a personal story about this as well. Uh, moving on to the application content. Um, and also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask as well. Um, I'm happy to answer some questions in between. Um, this is how the application looks like. So there is, I'm going to speak mostly about uh, about the divisions one, two, three, because they are a little bit tougher ones. They require more information. They require, um, their application is a little bit more sophisticated than the fourth section, which is a skills section. Skills division is um, more like a for campaigns or for tactical solutions and it's a little bit shorter so all you have to do is fill in the information you don't have to provide the work sample and um, and what is very important is that uh, well what what it helps is that you just have to fill in the application and you just have to prepare one file so that is really really useful um, in terms of time so if you can manage division one to three then you can definitely manage the application for Division 4. Uh, so what do we have in the application? Um, really definitely use this opportunity and download the Word document file, which is a template. And the template has the following sections that you see in the slide, which is the business need opportunity, stakeholder analysis, goals and objectives, the solution overview, implementation and challenges, measurement and evaluation. Well, I'm not going to speak very much in detail about what exactly has to be in those because for this you really have the Goldkill uh, website and there's a lot of resources about this. So I'm not going to speak in detail on what is required, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about um, how to more efficiently fill this in. Because um, as you see, I have divided it into three phases of application. And those phases have some sort of sub-phases as well. So I'll try to explain this. So if you look into the phase one, where you, have, um, where you see lots of small colorful arrows, uh, what I suggest to start with is to start with goals and objectives and measurement and evaluation. Because um, why do I suggest doing this? Because you have to, it helps you to first select what your project was about. Because your project may include 15 different initiatives, but to win an award, probably you will have to speak only about five of them. Because some of them will be kind of hygiene or something that my boss has asked that it's a nice thing to, to do or something that, you know, just came out and we realized that we have to do it, so we did it. So these two bits, goals and objectives and measurement and evaluation, helps you to discipline yourself and to make um, the project application more, not simplified, but more clear about what you're trying to achieve and how does it support the business needs. So do think about the business need or the opportunity, have it in mind, always think about what problem you were solving, but spend time typing about it. I think um, you should start thinking with the, with, the, with the goals and objectives and measurements and, and, and evaluations. And business need and opportunity, you would have it in mind, but when, once you've got goals and objectives and measurement and evaluation, then it's, it will be much easier to put all the other things in there. So the continue, the second uh, bits would be stakeholder analysis, 
implementation and challenges. So stakeholder analysis is more about going deeper into your audiences that you had to work with. So by knowing clearly what your goals were, you can select what were your key audiences because there could be different audiences, you know, men and women in the company or, you know, subordinates and managers and top management and uh, investors and whatever else it could be. And by having clear goals and clear business needs, it will help you to select which are the most important. And then another thing is implementation and challenges. It's more about what kind of ch uh, challenges have you faced. It is a section to prove that you have used the resources effectively. So that's something as well. You, when you think about the goals, you think about what to write and this is what you finish off. And then when you finally, finally finish off with, with the solution overview and the business need and opportunity. So when you think about the master thesis, I hope that uh, in the university you still remember this, that you had to do like master thesis or bachelor thesis or any other paper that you had to do. It, business need is more like an introduction of the thesis and then solution overview is more like uh, conclusions. So it's not, I mean, of course it's a little bit different, but, um, but it does, it is kind of as short, the shortest parts, but something that will help you to like really make it crisp and clear and, 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 and um, include everything that is in, in your application. Um, of course, if you have an idea which comes to you that, hey, I'm filling in goals and objectives now, but I just said, I just remembered there was this business need that I had that I was given by my management team, of course put it in. But um, the reason why I'm kind of suggesting this prioritizing is because um, the space of the uh, work plan is uh, very, very limited. You can only use a certain amount of pages with a certain size of the font. So if you prioritize, you will spend less time editing because you will already know about what you're, what you're talking about. So, so yeah, that's about the phase one of the fill-in process. And then again, you can also, I mean, if you have your team working on this, then it doesn't matter. You can actually distribute different parts of it to, to the team and then just review it once, once it's all together. Uh, moving on to the phase two, uh, that's about reviewing and re revising the work plan. So it is uh, very important that it's consistent, that it tells a story because jury will have no idea what your business about is about, what your project is about, and they have to understand it from those few pages. So just make sure that they are consistent, that they you omit everything that is not really necessary to have, but you keep all the things that are really needed. And there are some also tips and, tips and tricks that you could use. You can use abbreviations if you introduce them and so on. So you can use some things to make it shorter and to fit in more content into this. But yeah, the flexibility there is pretty limited. And then the third phase is the work sample. So my suggestion is start compiling the work sample only when you have the work plan in place. Of course, still collect the information. If you would think you might not use it, but if it is a related presentation to your project, keep it in one folder. Maybe you will use one slide of it. You know, maybe you will find it useful. So keep on collecting information, but sit at the, at the work sample only when you're done with the work plan, because then you will know the structure about how, what exactly, because what is in the work sample has to very clear link with what is in the work plan. And work sample can be, at least in my case, I did the um, presentation. Uh, it was a PDF document. And there I was including all of the different things uh, starting from when we speak about the business need or opportunity. Uh, we had a slide about explaining about what our market situation was. We actually used it in the press conference. So explaining our story about where do those two companies come from, why do they merge, what is the business rationale, and so on. Then for stakeholder analysis, maybe we would have some insights about, you know, from the employee survey about what their opinion is on certain topic that your project supports and, um, you know, what kind, of, what kind of attitudes do they have and so on. Goals and objectives, they usually come into work plan. I'm not sure if work sample needs some expansion on this, but sometimes it does. In the measurement and evaluation, I, we did the employee engagement survey in detail, so we put in the reports in there. So there's, um, 
within the within the if you name the sections the same way in the work sample then also it's very easy for the jury to read and you also can include the, the examples of your work and then again work sample doesn't have to include everything everything but it uh, should include the information that is critical for the jury to know that it will show how you how you were thinking what's your thinking process behind and what were the solutions that you were doing to 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 address the challenges of the business uh, moving on um, what is the best way to organize in entry information so I'm also already going to the small section in, in italic the best way actually to organize entry information is to even before the project starts to think you know what I'm gonna make this an award-winning project and I'm gonna set it up according to best practice so I would have everything I have for the application I did meet in the world I didn't do it uh, I was not thinking about that about that time but um, but uh, I did meet some people in the world conference who were winners as well as I, I was who were actually said like thinking when they set up some projects they were thinking about what do I need to get an award which is not a bad thing I think because awards are based on the best case practice so they are not you know something that you know uh, would be not useful for the business to do for example to do regular measurements I mean is was it ever not useful to do when you measure your project uh, at certain stages when you measure you can actually come back to your management team and say or to your client if you are a consultant and you say okay so this is how our numbers have improved so it will benefit your project as well when you're doing it so that would be an ideal thing in in, in my case I wasn't doing it this way but uh, but uh, we did measure we did we did manage the project using the best case practice and we did have a lot of a lot of data to show which which really really helped and uh, if we talk about organizing the information so two principles that I suggest you to have in mind is simplicity and consistency so when you sp speak about simplicity cut everything that is not necessary to save space and jury's time so it is never at the beginning you will probably not say what is not necessary but um, but often step by step you realize what is actually the most important thing to say in a certain project it can be also not easy because different projects especially in the big com uh, companies like um, like the one I work for are usually interrelated so maybe for agencies it's a little bit easier because they have separate clients and separate projects but when you're solving like a big complex pro pro problem it's kind of hard to segment what is actually necessary and what actually made that difference so it's a good time for you to reflect about this another thing is actually tell the story so once you read your application try to read it or give it to a person who has never heard of it like your husband or somebody even more distant and um, and and uh, find out if it tells the story that you want to tell did they understand it did they understand what the change happened after the project what exactly did you do to execute this project and to make that change happen and um, if if it doesn't then provide enough context to to understand as I said uh, Telia Lithuania um, as a company is known in Europe it's known in more like Baltics and and Scandinavia but I knew that there's a jury all around the world judging it so they will probably know, know not know what my company is and I had to provide a context about why we did this merger how big the change was or how significant it was why it was so interesting for the public or maybe not interesting for the public but we made it interesting so that's something interesting to include either in your work plan if you can in the you know business need or solution overview or if you if you are missing some space then add it add it to the work sample um, and so moving on to consistency as I mentioned work plan and work sample have to be completely in line so if you think about the jury member they would look at the work plan um, and then they would say okay where is the evidence supporting that you actually did that 
So in the work sample, there has to be the evidence where they see. And um, these were some of the learnings that they got from this, from this application. Uh, the most important interconnection that has to be in your work plan is objectives, measures, and business outcomes. Uh, it's, it's very important that your objectives would be measured upon and that also those objectives would be supporting business outcomes. That really may gave some extra credit for me that I related it to very clear business outcomes and I even brought them up. Um, also invest in design and make it easy for jury to read. I'm not saying pay money for the design. If you need to, you can. But just make sure that it's not, um, that your work sample is not very, very small font and lots of reading. Make sure that you make it visual, make it easy, make it, make it, make it a pleasure to read. Uh, and not make it too beautiful or too, you know, or, you know, it's not about the content of making it beautiful, but just making it easy and simple to read. I think that's the most important thing. And um, if you want to do a checklist when you did the application and see what you have, you think about, you know, whether you have a successful case. That's the basis of it all. Objectives that matter to the business. So what is the output, outtake, and outcome? Uh, and focusing mostly on outcome and business outcome, communications and business outcome. Uh, because you may not be able to directly affect the sales, but you may be, your, some of the communications activities may have provided your salespeople more motivation to do better sales, for example. So just making sure that you outline that. Measurement before, after, in between. Uh, audience insights. That's a very important thing for the successful. I, I see that it's being stressed in all of the resources. You have to look, at, when you look into your audience, don't only write that, you know, our frontline force is mostly women and, um, and uh, little less men. Put in the numbers. How, what is the percentage of women? What is the percentage? Maybe some other interesting implications. For example, in our case, our locations were interesting because we had 3,000 people across 70 plus locations, which is quite a challenge for an internal communicator to manage such a size and such a distribution of all the people. So, so look inside what was important, what things were you considering about your audience to execute things, and think about you know what 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 are the things and um, it's always very interesting to look into demographics of them into what their opinions were, why they were a tough audience. For example, top management could be a very tough audience to persuade that, you know, it's really required to and so on. And you can and you can really outline that it was what was the approach that you got them on board and they did actually what you what you suggested. So so it is I mean, it seems to be quite self-explanatory, but don't don't overlook this this part. Do really do your stakeholder analysis well. And uh, then the last one is showcasing how efficient you were in using resources. Um, it's uh, it's of course very subjective, and you can think about different things. Um, you can think about how many people in the team were working on this, was it efficient or not, was it challenging or not. Then you can also outline um, what was the budget and what was the impact for this budget. Like um, for the events it could be contact price, for the engagement it could be what was investment per employee made, you know, was it efficient or not. That would be something that is definitely adds. It shows your business approach. As, as soon as you put in numbers, it shows that you're not doing communications for the sake of communications, but you are actually doing it to support the business. So this is something like a checklist for you to have a look into, you know, do, have I actually reflected this in my application? Last part, my key learnings and some examples about what uh, what uh, I have discovered in my own process of application and what really helped again and received the positive feedback from the jury. So I said it a couple of times again, and I'm and I'm and I'm repeating myself, but that's super important. That's why work plan must link easily with the work sample. So. When you think about the work plan elements, 
you think about how can you expand the same elements in the in the in the work sample so if you can make them exactly the same um, sections you probably will have to do subsections which is for example in the in the work sample as you see in the work plan i would do just you know as it is in the application but in the work sample you put you know you put a column and you put some of the things which you which you you may want to expand on what kind of elements of business need you want to expand on so so this is something to have in mind that but the structure what my key message here is that the structure has to be very clear about what you are trying to talk another way to organize your work sample is actually take the solution overview part and then break it down in the work sample because the solution overview is the widest part it's kind of your plan it's your communications plan what have you done as your solution so in this like what kind of actions did you take so this is actually an opportunity for you to expand on the plan to describe an activity to show an evidence of what how this activity looked like and so on and another thing about the work sample the more authentic things you can put in like your survey data well not the survey data but the survey questions that you have asked or um, uh, the particular um, pictures from the events or like different different things that prove that you actually did it that they are real so not the theoretical but practical things that you did the better it is um, sorry I just jumped from the uh, from one thing to the other so simplicity and consistency coming back to these two principles uh, this is an example about how in work plan I had the uh, section number two which is called goals and objectives and then in, in section number six was, was measurement and evaluation and if you look closely you would see that I had a goal so overall goal was to explain the rationale and benefits of integration manage stakeholder expectations and that um, and then make sure that everybody understands that until end of 2015 this is where the, when the program started the two-year program until the end of 2015 everything stays as is this was a key moment for us when you announce about the potential merger they actually say okay you guys um, we are still two separate country uh, companies we are still have to make our yearly targets everything stays the same until instructed otherwise and keep yeah you know keep calm keep calm and work on and then we thought okay well how are we gonna achieve this what kind of objectives do we build as a communications so we define that it's gonna be accurate media coverage we will know that we have succeeded if it is accurate media coverage media will make it clear and consistent uh, that the publicity is more positive than negative that the that the measures are in place so 100% of facts are correct and no incidents of confidential info leakage and then another measure for us was number of positive and neutral media appearances and then I put the business outcomes in there so that there's no no major disruptions on the client side and that the NPS net promoter score how will measure our clients perception of us remains the same or goes up and then when I speak about measurement and evaluations I put exactly the same measures as you see the measures are the same results are the same as measures and then I link it to the expected business outcomes and the results so I think this is a critical part because very often um, when we speak about objectives when we go to the measurement and evaluation part we measure something else so or we measure the right thing but we don't put it into the application so that's something which is really important this is where I speak about consistency and it's also not not a rocket science so it's simple enough to 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 add in another one is use research or other indirect sources um, that was again showing your expertise about that you didn't think that oh that would be a great idea to manage the change this way but you actually would take a model which you have learned somewhere and put it in practice and um, this is a example of uh, the change curve that we have used and as you see from the color coding on the research on the left that it can create alignment maximize communication spark motivation develop capability share knowledge is different things that you need 
in the different change phases. And if you look on the right hand side, when I was doing the detailed internal communications plan for three months, I was actually very clearly with the same colors outlining which is meant for what. Of course, those phases overlap and that was the intention, but where you see create alignment, the light orange thing, this is, you know, the tools that are meant for this will mark this color. And this is something that is, again, showing that you are professional, that you took an educated decision about choosing one or another thing and also giving a sample of the comps plan in a, in a, in a very visual form also always helps. So that was something that was new to me because I wouldn't think that it's super important, but definitely from the feedback I understood that it is. And um, it will be surprising how many things that we think that it's obvious to do, but, but it's not. Um, another one is that visual and visual aids and emotion makes the story much more vivid. So don't hesitate and take the effort to compress the videos to the good size to add pictures, to add uh, learning documents, wrap-up documents, anything that is visual that gives an emotion, it gives a, it, it, it helps you to tell the story. So, so if you have something to, 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 to support, something visual to support this, there is a limit to the files that you can upload, but definitely select what kind of files would you like to upload and, and do that. So as you see here, it is, um, yeah, it is the, a, from the skills category, just a sm small excerpt from the video from the internal brand launch. Of course, there was a longer video about this. Um, one of my last points is that, you know, during this um, application process, very often you think, screw it, I'm not going to do it. It's too complicated. It takes too much time. I still have my work, daily work to do. Why, why is it worth it? And um, just when you think about this, I, you probably know about the, uh, the comparison of, you know, when you speak to a person and one person is saying, uh, oh, I'm just laying the bricks. And then there is a huge difference when you say, hey, I'm building the church. So the effect that it has is that when I share the application form with my team, uh, my team took, took the time to read it, which I was surprised about, but they took the time to review the application and um, because I was thinking that everybody would be sick of it. But when the final, final one was already uploaded and I said, this is the application and so on. And I'm, I'm, I've been saying, you know, hey guys, great project, great job. And I hope we're going to win. And we did win in the end. And I got this, you know, laying bricks versus the church, um, church uh, versus building the church uh, thing, because they said, wow, we were actually doing an amazing thing here. And uh, this here you see a picture of a really nice church in my city in Vilnius. It's a, it's a gothic pearl. And um, in our world, in our team, there was this, um, our church and laying bricks thing is a um, textile wall that we, for every event, when we're going to put it up, we have to, somebody of us, somebody from my team has to take the actual iron and to iron it. Because usually when it's folded, you, it's, it, it has creases and it's wrong and so on. So this is like the, if you think about the worst job and the most, the most, um, how to say, um, least interesting and mostly mechanic job. So that would be something in the, in the team that we had to do. Luckily, we don't have this textile wall anymore. So, so, so this is, they said, oh, wow, it's actually, we, we did actually merge two companies. We didn't just, you know, were ironing the textiles. So, so, so that was the reactions that I got and they really did get the impact that they have done, which is always great for motivation for everyone. So whenever you think that, okay, it's too daunting, it's too much, it's taking up too much time, think about the church that you have already built by doing a project and think about whether this church, uh, building this church is worth an award or not. And if it's, if you still think it's worth, definitely do and apply. So yeah, these are key learnings. 
and um, and yeah, and it's a bit of a trick. One thing that I didn't mention very much, but uh, what has to say and what has to crop out, it's also a big editing exercise because there's always one word that you can use a shorter version of, or you can get rid of some certain words, and they also help you with the with the short applications. That would be it from me. Uh, if you have any questions, there is a, my email and my Twitter handle. And uh, you can also freely ask questions now if you have any or if you're considering applying for the, for the Gold Girls because I really would like to see more of the Gold Girls in the World Conference in Monreal uh, next year. Thank you, Vivian. Um, I think it was excellent advice and um, as an evaluator I can only attest to uh, so many things that you said. Um, while we're waiting, we still have four minutes available for the questions. Um, if uh, somebody has the questions, uh, please put them in the questions box. And while we're waiting for the, for the questions, let me just change the screen and just a second. Okay. Okay, so I'm assuming now that you uh, see my screen and um, our next webinar, which will be on the 19th of December, um, 6 p.m. CET. So we're changing a little bit the time. Uh, you can also send us an email if you have a preferred time for future webinars, uh, because we're trying different, uh, different things. Um, so you can see um, that uh, Maya Townsend and Marta Meiser will be presenting, and they will be uh, talking about the shifts that we need to make in order to thrive in the in the 21st century. So uh, while we're waiting for any questions, uh, we have a few attendees still uh, online. Um, I have one question for you, Via. Um, is there something that you would, you know, if you did it um, tomorrow again, that you would definitely do it differently or totally change it? Mm, do you ask about the application itself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you I said a lot of things, but is there something that you would, um, you know, if you knew that beforehand, that you would never do that? Yeah, some of the things I've shared, because some of the things that I've shared, I haven't done myself. So, um, like ah, allocating okay. <laughs> enough time, it was it was definitely some some evenings that I've spent actually actually collating some information, and I was thinking, oh my God, why didn't I do this earlier? Because it's maybe not very simple, but it just takes time until you get the best idea on how to yeah. put it across. And then another thing is probably involve the most the team in this, mm -hmm. because. Um, that is something that I also think that, of course, it depends also on the workloads and everything, but, uh, but if you want to educate your team and if you want to develop your team, then again, it's very good to give them tasks like this because then they support their, it, it supports their analytical thinking, then they start thinking about why I do things the way I do. So it was a pride moment for them when they read it, but it's also the process itself. I think it would be very worthwhile for development. For me, it was a great development. So I, I see that it would be, it would be a very, a very good development for anyone. Mm. Yes. Okay. So um, thank you. We have one question from Esri. Uh, any particular tips on choosing the right category? Did you enter in more than one category? I did. Um, you can have one project and enter it in different categories. For example, if there was an event which was meant to, well, what I did is that I applied for strategic communications for the whole change program, which was lasting one and a half years. And uh, at that time, it was uh, one and a half years. We had three stages, and I have evaluated all the three stages. And then, um, in another category, in skills category, I picked special events because I thought one event was particularly worthwhile and it was an innovative approach and I thought it has some potential for winning. It was our internal brand launch because it was really innovative, innovative way of engaging 3,000 people in different locations. So 
think about what kind of things, what kind of values does it bring. And uh, you do have to tailor your application for each category, but you can definitely take one big project and see if parts of it or all of it can apply to different categories. That increases your chances of, of, of winning probably. So, yeah. so that's... Uh, Not just that's, copying the application. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, um, our time is up. And since we don't have any more questions, I'm just going to say thank you very much, Via. I think this will be really beneficial, not only for the participants today, but also for anyone that will um, hear the recording or see the recording later. Uh, for everyone that was uh, registered, you will get the recording. And if you want to share it with, uh, with your colleagues, uh, please do so. You can always access the, the sign up screen. They just need to um, uh, leave the contact information and they will uh, get the recording. Uh, and also, last but not least, uh, as we already mentioned, um, please save the date. You will get the information soon. So, uh, the 9th and the 10th of April, we're coming to Copenhagen uh, for the Eurocom again. And I think it's going to be a fantastic event. Everyone who attended, uh, at least in the uh, last three years that uh, I attended, I think uh, the reviews were excellent and I'm looking forward to um, creating and participating in another fantastic event. Via, thank you very much. Everyone, thank you. bye and see you next month uh, on next webinar. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. You too. Bye-bye.